Hello and welcome to the beautiful map Forts of Ice in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 1.06. Today we are going to cast a El Clasico replay between the Isengard player China against the Great Gonzo Players TV. You know, the clash of good and evil just like in the films. And you know me now, for a while I love those matchups quite a lot. I can watch them all day, you know, all day long. So basically we have a Gondor with double farm start, which is something we don't see very often. The reason is simple, because if you build up a blacksmith at the beginning of the game, it will level up to level 2 a bit sooner, faster, which again is necessary for you to be able to purchase upgrades like Forge Blades, Heavy Armor and the Banner Carry upgrade. But it's fine, because the farms are giving you the food bonus. Food bonus would mean that you get the chance to recruit your Gondor Knights, in this case the Gondor Cavalry, a bit cheaper. Remember the Gondor Knights from the Gondor faction are definitely way more expensive than the Rohirrim from the Rohan faction. So, he's actually splitting his, his Hobbit. Where is the Hobbit at? Hobbit is moving from the top side. And the second soldier battalion is actually moving from the bottom side. And the first one is hugging the wall. That's a start I have not seen before. But I'm curious, you know, if this is gonna work out or not. Because as Gondor, your early goal at the beginning of the game is always to deal economical damage and that's only possible if you are able to take down those lumber mills at the beginning. Isengard, starting with the Uruk pit which is very normal against good factions like Gondor and Rohan you want to always build a Uruk pit to be able to defend yourself early on but also to get the Uruk pit to level 2 as soon as possible to get the chance to recruit some pikemen, one of the best counter units to the enemy cavalry. And I think China, the Isengard player, actually losing a lot of Uruks against the full of a Tuk, <laughs> very green Tuk. And he will also be surprised about the second soldier, which is coming from the bottom right side. He doesn't see that coming. On the bright side, he will be able to destroy one of the enemy farms. That's not bad. And now we have three farms inside and two farms outside. That would mean at this point that Gondor player Stevie is getting 25% discount on his Gondor Knights. Without any discount, however, the Gondor Knights would cost 800 which again is a lot of investment, especially early on. And I believe that's the reason why he was building up the farms. Or maybe he was expecting to face against Mordor. Against Mordor you don't need upgrades early on because normally you would rush Gandalf. But against Isengard I would still definitely recommend you guys to build a blacksmith at the very start. Elvin Wood has been pleased on this area. He's fighting against the Uruks with the soldiers, but they are getting buffed, obviously, from the Alvin Wood, getting additional armor, and also the enemy units are losing their leadership bonuses. With the help of Pippin, who is, by the way, almost level 3, he will be definitely able to win this fight, and I'm assuming this mill right after will be definitely taken down. The stable is now building up for, Steve, uh, for Stevie. He has only one single mill, which is protected for now, but it's about to be changed, because the soldier hugging the wall, being extremely patient, you know, the pathing is such an interesting one and also patient one. I would lose my patience and actually rush it down, but Stevie is playing for his life. <laughs> and I like that. I really do. So basically now he sent another Urukai to defend this area, but now he has nothing to defend this area. So in the worst case scenario, he might end up losing both the mills. And I think that's going to be the case. Because look at the clumping, Hobbit is sporting. He is trying to repair this with the workers, but it's too late. The mill is going down. And also this mill, if he has nothing to defend himself with, will also be taken down. It's like the best start you can actually have against Isengard. On the bright side, if there is any for China, he was able to destroy both the farms from the Gondor player's TV and capture one of them. But the thing is, you cannot keep those mills protected for a long time because the Gondor Knights, they have a you know, shorter distance to this area and your Uruks are going to be just free food. The Gondor Knights will be like, looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. Hobbit was also able to get cloaked, which means the Isengard player won't even get the chance to recapture the settlement anytime soon. The only way you can reveal the Hobbit is either by recruiting Lords, again, that's not affordable right now for Isengard player China, or you can also go for the Vision of Palantir, which also costs you one power point, will slow you down, your industry, your tainted land. So, you know, in any situation, Gondor is definitely coming ahead as he was able to destroy both the mills, which with a very, very interesting playstyle at the beginning of the game. The Gondor Knights are trampling down those Uruks. The good thing for Stevie is he has now this one mill under his control. He will also be able to recover this one after dealing with the soldiers. One power point collected. Will he actually go for the vision of Palantia to reveal the Hobbit? If he doesn't, uh, this settlement is going to be blocked from the Hobbit Peregrine took for a really long time. Eventually even for the, you know, until mid to late game. Or maybe the entire game, who knows? 
So Gondor is gonna reclaim. He was also getting those Gondor Knights to level 2. Palantir is gonna be indeed chosen. And Palantir, if you don't know, is revealing invisible units. Spy on enemy units. Doesn't even say that in the description, by the way. But it definitely does. We have a Berserk on the field now to, be, to make sure that he has the power and the damage output he needs to kill Pippin. But I think that's a win win situation for Stevie, the Gondor player, anyway. Because now he knows, okay, my opponent cannot have Industry, cannot have Tainted Lands. So it's a very definitely a great, I mean, one of the best starts I've ever seen in this matchup. We have now Pikeman, the best counter to the enemy Gondor Knights from Isengard faction. We will get more and more Gondor Knights on the field. We have now two in total. Isengard is slowly but surely recovering, but it's going to take him way longer than in normal circumstances. But it's fine. The Alvin Wood has been placed at the beginning here. The Creep, Gondor is fighting for it. Let's see if we're going to get the last hit on it. Yes, he got the last hit. And what about the money? Isengard needs it desperately. And Isengard actually gets both the money treasure. That's pretty nice for Isengard. He will, you know, he needed that. He desperately needed that. So now at this point... It's, it means for Isengard player China, spam pikes, 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 all game long. Gondor, bull on the other side, skip the uh, the heal from the spare book after the Elven Wood and try to get 3 power. Oh, what? Well, that's very unfortunate. That's a very greedy move from Stevie. He wanted to fight, fight this with his Gondor Knights because he knew, you know, he was like, okay, there are no pikemen, maybe I can fight this, but they were war chanted with Berserk hitting like a truck. And look at this, you see this? With the pikes, he's blocking the ga gate. And that's gonna force Stevie to eventually build now a post on gate. If he wants to be able to leave the base anytime soon. Barax is coming up for the Gondor soldiers, which are one of the, you know, cheap counters to the enemy pikemen. Pikes are basically weak against everything but against horses. So with the soldiers in a one-on-one -on -one situation, you can definitely take them down. But it's okay for China, because now he's able to stall the game out. After a rough start like that, you wanna just be able to buy yourself some more time. And it's also very important for Isengard player China that he can guard all these creeps, you know, on the map. Because the last thing that you want as Isengard player against Gondor is that he gets the power points quite soon for the Elven summon. That's really bad. Because then your pikes are gone, you know? And that's your entire bet. That's your win condition in this matchup against Gondor as Isengard. Nearly two power points collected. The soldier is going to be joining the battlefield. That's going to force China to, you know, retreat with the pikemen. Because pikemen, if you don't pay attention, they will get one-shotted by the enemy soldiers. And they will get more and more levels, more and more power points. And again, it goes hand-in-hand. Hand. More power points. Fast the Alvin summon. Fast the Alvin summon. Fast the clearing of the map against the enemy pikemen. Which again will give Gondor a huge advantage to end the game. Is China paying attention? Yes, he does, I believe. But you need to, you know, disable the porcupine formation to be able to get away faster. Don't fight this. You cannot win this. You see the damage output from the soldiers. And they are also gaining so much experience from killing those pikemen. And Stevie, I mean, the good thing for Isengard is there is no way the Gondor soldiers can ever catch you. So as long as you can keep running away, you should be in a good spot. Soldier battalion standing by. More of them are joining the battlefield. Isengard player creeping the Warclay on the left side of the river. In the meantime, we have still this one remaining on the field, this one remaining on the field, and this one even remaining is on the field as well. So actually, the only creep secured so far was the creep at the top right side. Very interesting. Who's gonna get the last hit? Oh, the Gondor Gondor Knights got the last hit, which brings him one step closer. He got it. He got the money at least. It's better than nothing. But you really want to be careful about the power points you give up for your opening, you know? Like this, for example. If you don't pay attention, you will lose many, many pikemen. And pikemen are way more expensive than the Gondor soldiers. 300 against 120. So it's pretty risky. But as mentioned before, you know, Isengard can be very strong in the mid game. And now to counter the enemy soldiers, he will be recruiting some Vork Riders. He has also the one worker around the castle. So basically, Isengard has now lots of vision. You know, you see you see that? He has the well under his vision, blacksmith farm level 2. He has two power points collected now, which can be invested if he wants to uh, for the industry. Or you can save one more power point and go for a tainted land. This way, you can counter and cover the next Elven Wood usage of the Gondor player's TV. So you have many, many options. If you lack of money, you can go obviously for the industry, which is going to be a huge... Uh, money boosting, eco boosting ability from the Isengard faction, and also brings you later on faster to Balrog because 
industry cost you two power points tainted land will cost you three power points and so on oh the brush actually uh, he was abusing the fact that they have no towers only one tower on this on this side um, do they have shields? Yes, sir. They have shields indeed. War is gonna be used, but they have no blades. Without blades, they don't deal too much damage. And Stevie is over committing on this war, but and he will be losing yet another Gondorite Battalion. I mean, mistakes like that, trust me on L1, can turn this game around. Industry is gonna be chosen from the spellbook, will be used right off the bat on the three furnaces. What industry does, besides giving you 100% more money from the selected furnaces, is also leveling up those furnaces to level 2 and or level 3 way way faster and level 3 or level 2 furnaces would mean isengard's base would have much higher durability much more tankiness and every level 3 building from evil factions are also able to shoot which means the entire base from isengard will be like full of towers and again that's hard for gondor to deal with for that reason you would need highly leveled gondor knights a lot of them with full upgrades knight shields heavy armor forge blades to be able to deal any kind of damage oh yeah we will hear this song or sound all game long i mean more and more pikemen will be required at this point isengard should be just investing lots of money into building every single tower just you know better safe than sorry he has enough money for the lords or for the armory if he wants to because right now he has no armor no blades no banner gondor trying to fight against the enemy pikemen and now he actually went for the heal i think he went for the heal you know when he was committing against the warp pit so it's a win-win situation for china because now he knows okay heal was used it means it's gonna delay the enemy alvin special summon two power points collected after the heal and alvin root for the gondor player big fight and the war riders are just trying to take down those soldiers that's their own goal all goal are we gonna get played soon and you see that what i'm trying to say at the beginning of the game because look the blacksmith just recently hit level two and they need to be level two if you want to be able to buy banner heavy armor or forge for blades so basically the decision making from stevie at the beginning of the game slowed down the entire gaming progress in this matchup it could look much much better trust me obviously you would lose a little bit of uh foot bonus you know for the gunner knights but the amount of time you lose in exchange is not worth it so you rather would should be paying 50 more or 100 more resources for one gondor knight instead of having to wait like two three four five more minutes before you can buy any upgrades beside the night shields and even after this many minutes into the game the war creeps at the bottom side or this one at the bottom left side actually is still remaining on the field this one as well gondor might be able to get the last hit he does get the last hit indeed because he has forge blades he has the you know higher burst but i believe one part of the money has been once again secured by the purple Isengard player China. Nearly three power points, like one more kill. And the Alvin summon will be unlocked. Soldier Battalion standing by. In order to be able to counter not only enemy pikemen, but also enemy war riders, you can also combine them with the tower guards. You cannot combine them, but you can actually group them in one team. There is no Orcon, as Legolas would like to see. The Alvin summon will be special summoned now. And the pikes are falling apart. The base rush is happening now with shields and blades. No heavy armor yet. But the shields is our better choice for the for the arrows. Basically, it makes your Gondor Knight so tanky against arrows or anything that can shoot you down. And the Uruk Pit, this is the heart. And the most valuable and important structure from Isengard Castle. It will be unfortunately for the Isengard player China taken down. That will mean that for the next one, two, three minutes. Isengard player won't be able to recruit any more pikemen and that's painful trust me on that one the creep is still remaining on, on the field i cannot believe it <laughs> i think nobody knew knows now the gondor player might be able to see it just creep it you know it's free money free experience free power points just don't waste it take it and the thing is about the situation the gondor knights are a bit damaged especially this one so they cannot keep committing on this fight this one is, by the way, level 5. So each level, and I keep repeating myself, I'm sorry, but it's important that you understand. Level advantage in Battle for Middle of 1 is huge. Every single level is such a huge power spike for, you know, every hero unit. And especially early on, like one level 2 soldier can beat easily 1v2, two peasants, no problemo, without heal. It would never be the case for level 1 Gondor soldier. That's never possible. The burst damage you get, the tankiness you get, is insane. 
There are no pikemen, dude. That's very unfortunate for the Isengard player. He will keep losing a lot of stuff. And especially those furnaces, they are hurt, they hurt. You see, almost level 3, you cannot replace this structure. Looks like the Gondor player is peeling for now. The elves, they are not having too much time left in Middle Earth anymore. They will be also gone, disappearing very, very soon. In the meantime, we have fights for the map control. Isengard was actually able to purchase the outpost at the top right side, building three furnaces on it, just to make sure that he has a great amount of resource income. At this point, it's, it looks like he wants to actually... No, never mind. He actually goes for the upgrade. So he has heavy armor purchased, banner purchased, fire purchased, and also now the blades purchased. So every upgrade is purchased. That's good. And the most important upgrade is definitely the banner for the evil factions like Isengard. Because... You know, level 2 units are able to recover over time automatically. They have like the recovery, which level 1 units don't have. And remember, the evil factions in Battle for Middle of 1, they have no sustain, they have no heal, no well. That means, again, not only because of that, but also level 2 units are dealing way more damage. Oh, be careful with the Gondor Knights. Oh, man. You cannot fight against them. You know, now with level 2 heavy armor and forged blades, not even 4 Gondor Knights at the same time can fight against them. That's not possible. And almost 5 power points collected for the Isengard player after the industry. And we have almost 3 power points collected for the Gondor player Stevie after the Elven Wood, the Elven Elias, and the heal from the Spellbook. He might go for the Gandalf at this point, but he has not enough money. And, dude, I cannot believe it. The creep is still remaining on the field. Are you kidding me? Oh, another Grush is happening. Actually, lots of damage there. I missed that. The reason why I'm missing that, by the way, is because of the color of Stevie. Because he has grey color, and the grey color is barely visible on the minimap, guys. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry for that. So, Pikeman, he needs to get the Uruk to level 2 as soon as possible. If you want to speed this up a little bit, you can always recruit Crossbowmen. They give you the same experience, like, one of them is going to give you the same experience, like, two Urukai. So, basically, two of them and one Urukai is going to make, uh, you know, your Uruk pit get to level 2 much, much sooner than, you know, spamming only Uruks. That, that would, I believe, like, mean that you need to spam, like, seven Urukai instead of two Crossbowmen and one Urukai only. The Outpost... It's great, but it is not protected. He has not even arches inside of the hand. There is no protection at all. It will be slowly but surely taken down. We, in the meantime, get also tower guards. That's what I was talking about earlier. Because now you can be grouped like this. Tower guards are going to keep the war riders away. And the soldiers are going to take care of the enemy pikemen. It's a very good combination. And the only possible way Isengard can counter that Soldier is when he combines by. his pikemen with his Urukai. Which, by the way, is a very underrated combination in Battle for Middle of 1, but also very efficient. You lose the Porcupine formation, but they are still great against Gondor Knight. You also lose a lot of movement speed. I mean, every combination you make has advantages and disadvantages, right? But when it comes to fight against Tower Guards and Soldier at the same time, that's a very solid and reliable combination possibility from the Isengard faction in Battle for Middle of 1. Okay, Warchan has been used on the Spikemen. They are glowing. I missed that. He actually went for the Tainted Land, because that's one of the few matchups for the Isengard faction in which you don't really need the Freezing Rain. Because Gondor as a faction doesn't really rely on leadership bonuses. You know, unlike Rohan and Mordor, for example. That's why you can, instead of going for the Freezing Rain, just go for the Field of Fires. And get rich, you know, basically. get 100% more money from your Lamy Mills and stood. That's gonna make you rich. He actually combines them now. Okay, that's interesting. Let's see. I mean, the thing is, the, the Uruks, they took so much damage. I don't think it's going to be valuable. Now he can counter the Tainted Land, though. Go for this. Go for this. Go for this. You can do it. Don't hesitate. Yeah, he's wasting too much time. He still doesn't use it. He's using it now after all his units died. Oh, that's not worth it. The unit is trying to get away. I think he might be able to, get even, to even get away. Once again, level 2 unit means recovery. They are using both shield wall and also porcupine formation. The beast is looking strong for now. The furnaces are all about hit level 3, which again will increase the durability of the Isengard castle. The money is still on the ground. Nobody cares about this, you know, piece of treasure at this stage of the game anymore. Uh, Gondor, uh, instead of trying to save for Gandalf, he actually tries to fight actively for the map control, which is something I like a lot, but I would like Gandalf even more. I gotta be honest. I mean, the Gandalf, you know, Gandalf is the best hero in the game. However, in this matchup against Isengard, you just need to be careful against Lourdes. That's very important. Lourdes is an anti-hero. Regardless how strong your champion and your hero is, Lourdes doesn't care. You know, he will cripple you, pin you down for 30 seconds, which 
for a squishy hero like Gandalf is more than enough time for an up player to take him down. And it hurts, because Gandalf costs you 6k for, you know, to recruit, and also lots of money when you want to revive him. The outpost here, once again, is unprotected, and there is nothing the Isengard player can do about this situation. He cannot fight against the Tower Guards. The Tower Guards are pikemen of the Gondor faction. They can counter the enemy hardcore. But did you know that the Isengard pikemen units are way stronger than the enemy Tower Guards? Tower Guards mean strength. is actually their tankiness against arrows. For example, pikes are very vulnerable against sword, against archers. But Tower Guards are actually quite beefy even against combos, against fire. But their weakness is the damage type from the enemy pikemen. That's why in a one-on-one -on -one situation, the Isengard pikemen will always be able to win the fight. And with the Tower Guard soldier combination, he's actually successfully able to reclaim the map control. That's really nice to hear, or nice to see. In the meantime, before rush, but that's what I'm talking about. You see the durability of the level 3 furnaces. Uh, how long, how much time it takes for you to be able to take it down. It's kind of crazy. They're also acting like a tower. The Uruk Pit is finally level 2 for the Isengard play. Is he actually going for Saruman or something? No, he has actually no money. That's why you need the Field of Fires desperately. And losing those level 3 furnaces is quite painful. Look at that. 100% more money from resources from harvesting trees. Passively. And, you know, those buildings are going to now be on fire like the industry buff. The outpost was protected for now, but he has nothing on top of the outpost, around the outpost. So the bottom side of the map, as you can see and tell, is definitely under control from the Isengard play China. Gondor has more like a mid-game control, but he's kind of tunnel vision focusing on the enemy castle. And you know what I'm saying, map control is everything. At no stage of the game you wanna give up the map control against anyone, especially not against, especially not against evil factions like Isengard and Mordor. They will grow so incredibly fast, rich, that the amount of damage you can deal is nothing in compare of the sustain they got in their economy to be able to replace everything you, what you are able to destroy much, much faster than you can ever take them down. And Gondor still makes this Tower Guards and Soldier. And every single time he needs to invest 510 for Forge Blades and Heavy Armor. Elven Summon. Big base rush is incoming with three Gondorites, Elves. But this time, the Vork Riders are on the field to counter the enemy Elven Summon by trampling them down and war chanting and holding. 60% more damage from Hole, 50% more damage from the war chant. But Eagle Summon, holy moly. Actually, the Gondor player was able to collect so many power points. That's crazy. And do they have fire? No. Without fire, you cannot burst down the Eagles fast enough. And there is, not a sing there is only one single level 3 furnace. The beast is actually quite vulnerable now against a potential rush. Be careful with the war riders. There are tower guards in the porcupine formation. They look so cool in the porcupine formation, in the shield wall formation, guys. So dangerous. I mean, in the worst case scenario, you can summon the eagles to actually fight for the map control, kill the pikemen, kill the war riders, get even more power points collected. That's the best thing about the eagle summon. You can use it to get even more power points. You know, to get closer and closer for the army of the dead, which again, army of the dead and balrog summon from the evil factions is able to change the outcome of the game basically the balrog summon now for the for isengard player china would mean the end of the game because balrog as you know in this version of the game is able to one shot the entire castle by himself i hear the eagles boys eagles are being special summoned i believe to clean up the, the war riders yeah they are actually fast but not fast enough to escape the flying heroes are the in the fastest units in the entire game there is nothing that can be fast as that and Gondor is trying to go for a base rush. Here has been used, but now he has combos. Don't be clumped like this. When you clump like this, the eagles are having splash damage. They are able to hit multiple units at the same time. So basically, long story short, this is a horrible situation. A choke point between the buildings like that is gonna be a hallelujah moment for the Gondor player, Stevie. The eagles are very vulnerable against fire, especially when they are buffed. But for now, the Isengard player has no buff on them. There is also not even lords on the field just yet. To be honest, you don't need lords when there is no Gandalf. And from the money from Gondor players TV, I can tell you, there is not going to be Gandalf anytime soon on the field. But with the help of the Eagles, with the help of the Tower Guard soldier combination, he is successfully over and over again able to fight for the map control. At this point, I believe the best call for Isengard would be just to wait off the Eagle cooldown, you know, until the duration is gone. 
and the eagles have to leave middle earth then you can make a move two power points collected after the eagles that's what i'm talking about he was able to use the eagles to reclaim map control to get even more power points collected now getting closer for the army of the dead special summon isengard still needs like what 16 power points for his own balrog summon that's a lot i take orders only from I take orders only from Saruman. And there comes Lourdes, ladies and gentlemen, the fighting Urukai himself. With a fight, or oh, he actually found the barista with the Tau Guards and soldiers. I like this playstyle a lot. That's like much more active. You know what I'm saying? Normally, when you wait for a Gandalf, that would mean that you willingly have to give up the map control. But in this situation, you replace Gandalf with units you can actively fight with which would mean that you have more money, more resource income because you have more farms and also eventually more power points you can collect. Isengard uh, heavily relies on the Lumber Mills now. He has only one, two Lumber Mills on the field. You need more than that. You need at least four to not have any more uh, money problems anytime soon. The outpost is going down for sure. The outpost at the top right side is also not taken by anybody. Gondor can also capture this one and put some statues around it and wells for the sustain. You cannot fight, you cannot run away from the enemy pikemen too, by the way. I mean, basically, the Isengard infantry units are the fastest. There is nobody, like no peasants, no orcs, no Haradrims, no Gondor soldiers, Tower Guards that can be faster than pikemen and Uruks. The farm is going to be taken down. Gondor is going for another rush, putting permanent pressure on the Isengard castle and forcing him to pay attention around it while he is fighting for the map control with his other horses and or Tower Guard soldiers. Pretty intense micro micro and macro play from the Gondor Players TV. I like to watch that. And if you guys also enjoy this kind of content on this channel, please be sure to be subscribed to the channel and also leave a like on this video. Likes are actually helping quite a lot. I want to say thank you in advance. Five power points collected after the field of fires. He's 15 away from his own Balrog special summon, while Gondor is like seven and a half away from his own army of the dead. Army of the Dead can be placed in the middle of a castle, kill every single unit and heroes in few seconds, then you can commit. And the thing is, the second you use EOD, you get in these three power points of that, then you can summon also the Rohirrim allies, you know? Then you have, like, Gondor is the best summons in the game, there is no doubt about that. And also the most summons in the game. Rohirrim, Elves, Eagles, and Army of the Dead. While evil factions can only summon Valrog, and that's it, you know? Okay, big fight. Uh, Lutz is running for his life. Oh my goodness. The level 9 Gondonite is actually demolishing Lutz. Oh my, not even close. The base is completely fall falling apart. The Uruk Perez, I mean, it's an empty base now. Isengard is clearly underestimating the push power from the Gondor player Stevie. He has many, many highly leveled Gondonites. Level 10, level 7. Level 4. I mean, he has four full upgraded Gondonites with the Alvin Summon behind. You cannot hope that one single Pikeman is gonna do the magic trick. And one single Pikeman is gonna keep your castle protected. Especially not when your furnaces are not even level 3. When the, all the furnaces are level 3, maybe. Not even then it's confirmed. But this way, hell no. There is no way, you know? And he gets punished for it big time. He actually went out with his combos for literally no reason. I mean, that is eventually one single reason and the reason is to kill the tower guards and soldiers but leaving a base like that hurts even though he has eventually money not even that much money he can't recover from this time in, from this anytime soon and gandalf ladies and gentlemen look the money he has enough money for gandalf now he has also power points to turn gandalf the gray into the gandalf the white very intense gameplay from the gondor players tv he keeps pressuring, getting more and more power points collected. At this point, he can even skip Gandalf and try to get the necessary four more power points to get actually the Balrog, and uh, not Balrog, sorry, the Army of the Dead Summon Unlocked, which would be insta-win at this point. You know, to be honest with you guys, EOD and Balrog, they feel like more like an Exodia deck from Yu-Gi-Oh! You know what I'm saying? If you have Exodia, all five pieces, it's insta-victory. That's how powerful the battle, the battle for Middle Earth Ultimate Summons feeling like. Especially in Battle for Middle of One on the older versions. On the patch 2.22, we actually balance it a bit. So they lose movement speed, they have uh, less duration, they have longer cooldowns, so they cannot wipe out the full base anymore by themselves. 
but on the older versions i don't know what is the intention from that to be honest but how fair is that that one balrog can kill the full, full entire castle of gondor and rohan in no time Isengard is still 12 power points away from his own Balrog summon, while Gondor is only 4 power points, but he will get Gandalf now. An Eagle summon once again. Where is the Eagle summon at? Uh, he, a wizard arrives precisely when he means to. He needs now 2 power points to actually turn him into the Gandalf the White. That's very important. Otherwise, he will be kind of useless, because, you know, Gandalf the White is a huge power spike, gives you double the speed of recharging, more 100% more damage from the powers, he will get the chance to be mounted on a shadow fakes. So long story short, Gandalf the Grey, tell, let me tell you that much, is definitely not worth investing 6,000 into. Smart move, attacking the Citadel, but will he do it? I think he can. One more attack is needed to take it down. Lourdes is not even on the field. And that's a very smart move from, from Stevie. Because he expects Lourdes, not, not, right? I mean, Lourdes is dead. He expects Lourdes to be revived. But now he knows, okay, Lourdes is dead. He has no way of reviving Lourdes. That means my Gandalf now can do whatever he wants. And like, boom, sun on your face. From level 5 to level 6 with one beautiful, juicy wizard blast. And I'm impressed. I'm impressed from the beginning of the game until... I mean, there are a couple of mistakes, but, you know, mistakes are important and necessary to actually make the game last a bit longer. The beginning with the soldier coming from, from bottom. All the way he was hugging the wall, guys. That was crazy. He was hugging the wall walking all the way to the corner moving slowly to this area and then t destroying this while he was drawing attention to this mill like this start only that was like a crazy start very fun to watch expert play on the next level definitely you know very good play aggressively with the tower guard soldier combination so please let me know in the comment section down below what do you think about this gondol play as the Isengard player is surrendering the game and that's it. I want to say thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Until then, keep hitting like a dragon as always. Stay beyond standards. Peace out.